This is Oklahoma Police Detective Michael Neely. For over a decade, Michael would interrogate suspects as they sat in the same seat that he is sitting in now. Just the day before, Michael and his chief of police, Lucky Miller, had gone on a trip together to attend a law enforcement conference in Florida. While they stayed at a hotel, the staff would receive multiple noise complaints from the room that both officers shared. Security would enter the room and find Michael sitting on top of his deceased police chief. How do Mike? Hello. I'm Investigator Martinez. I think you've already met Investigator Tatum. Mm -hmm. Here's my card, sir. All right, Mike, before we begin, I'm glad you have your rights, all right? Yep. So tell me, Mike, you guys um, flew out of Tulsa? Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City, okay. Into Pensacola? Yep. Was it a direct flight? Nope. Right. Where, where'd you guys stop? Houston. Houston. Mm -hmm. Was it a long layover or just a... Short, pretty short. Right. So from Houston to Pensacola? Yep. What time did you guys get in? Uh, I don't... I don't even remember. Uh, the afternoon, sometime. Okay. Uh, did you guys get the run car? Yes. Okay. Enterprise or? Uh, I think it was Enterprise. Okay. All right. And then from there, um, we uh, got to the hotel. And that's it. You got to the hotel. Did you guys make any stops anywhere? Or? After checking into the hotel, both men began drinking and watching a football game in the hotel's restaurant. They started with beer, but then quickly moved to vodka. Both men were extremely intoxicated by the time they made it back to their room. Uh, any problems uh, or anything going on in the crowd? Just a normal dinner or what? Just a normal. Mm -hmm. Any drinks there or just dining with a couple beers? Yeah. I guess from where Crabs is to the hotel, just walked. Yes, not very far. Yeah, it's just right there. Was it a early dinner, or late dinner, or what? Very early. It was. Uh, I don't even think it was dark yet. All right. And tell me once what what you guys did once you got back to the hotel. That's about it. Just watch football game. <clears throat> particular team or just football in general? That was Dallas game, starting. Mm -hmm. Dallas and somebody else remember who. Alright. Do you remember uh, hotel staff or hotel employee coming up and telling you guys to keep it down? I don't. I don't remember that. So what is the last thing you remember as far as that evening until the football game? Michael doesn't know that the chief is dead and he's about to ask in a very strange way. Well, I, I mean, I, I know you're asking me questions, but can I ask you a question? Absolutely. Okay, homicide, who, 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 who is dead? Dead. Yes, sir. Hmm. <coughs> okay. Hmm. <coughs> <coughs> so we're trying to figure out what happened. I guess I, I probably don't have any anything else to say then. I, I've got nothing nothing to say to you. All right, sir. Okay.
Michael invokes his rights, but a trained detective has ways of getting a suspect to talk without asking them questions about the case. Did you uh, advise him when he was charged with? No, um, Michael, you've been charged with second degree murder. Okay. okay. Yeah, I had no idea what I was being charged with. Yeah, you're being charged with second degree murder and you're fixing to be booked in the Scamby County Jail with no bond. And we've already notified your, uh, your wife. Okay. Uh, and um, the victim, yes. I'm assuming. Yes. Okay. And, uh, and uh, we've notified the department. Okay. And the task force head. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have any questions for us? I mean, I've, yeah, I've got a, a thousand of them, but I mean, it really doesn't make it. Well, I mean, sure it does. I mean, if you want to talk, we'll sit here and listen to you talk. I mean, we'd love to know what the heck happened. I, uh, I, but I mean, that's that's up to you. I mean, we'll answer your questions, you know, in return. So I, I would love to know what happened to, uh, you know. Well, I mean, do you want to continue to talk to us? If you do, then I mean, we'll tell you what happened. I mean, I I, I would love I I would like to I would like to know what happened. Uh, you know, because I'm, I'm I'm telling you, I don't uh, I don't have any memory of of any of this shit, and I, you know, uh, I'm I'm shocked that it's dead. I mean, it's it's it's, it's shocking. You know, I'll tell you that. Uh, Maybe maybe it could jump but my memory. I I, I have no idea. So, but if, I, mean, I I don't know. Do you want us to? You want to continue talking to us? Yeah, I mean, I, I I'll continue to talk. I'd I'd like to know what happened. I mean, what if you'll tell me what happened? Uh, that that'd be great. You know. Okay. Uh, well, we'll continue this interview with you. It's like uh, I'm I'm trying to get you to figure out what's the last thing you remember. Mm -hmm. And if you, the last thing you remember was watching football, uh, do you remember drinking? Yeah. Okay. Were you drinking the vodka? Yeah, I drank some vodka. Okay. okay. And that's why I wanted to figure out if you stopped anywhere because there was a bottle of vodka in the refrigerator. So, okay. um, like I said, uh, we've all flown on airplanes and we know you can't carry. Yeah, that was, that was before dinner. Okay. Uh, I think that, that was either before dinner or right after dinner bought that vodka yeah okay all right because i know being out there there's that liquor store right probably to the front and to the right of you know the hotel yeah so mm -hmm. uh, well the first call came a little bit after six i believe uh one of the guys that uh in the room next to you didn't say you guys were arguing just being loud just laughing yelling probably Maintenance or security came up, knocked on your door, answered it. The guy said, can you guys keep it down? We got a noise complaint. He said, fine, we'll keep it down. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next noise complaint came out about nine minutes till 10 in the evening. Uh, this one was from the other neighbor because the one beside you, the first complainant, uh, they moved his room because you guys were continuing just to be loud. Nothing out of sorts, just being loud. Uh, this time you can't get anybody to come to the door. All he hears, he's knocking. He hears just grumbling, grunting. Uses his car to get in. Walks in and you remember the room layout. There's two queen beds is on the ground between the bed and the wall you are sitting on his chest his face is beaten and he tells you get off of him get off of him pulls you off of him you go on the bed roll off the bed fall on your face and that's where the nose and the lip get busted and responsive statement that was given by the second noise complaint could hear a male saying Mike stop Mike stop and then it just went quiet 
You would think that a detective who was familiar with the law and who has just been charged with homicide would remain silent and ask for a lawyer. So far, Michael has done everything you should not do in his situation. He hasn't shown remorse or sympathy for his chief or the chief's family, which would have gone a long way in proving his accidental death. He also hasn't spoken with a lawyer first, so they could discuss his options moving forward. Hmm. Dad, is that what you're telling me? Yes, sir, he's dead. Hmm. <clears throat> he was found dead between the uh, his bed and the wall. Hmm. And his face was... Uh, his right eye was pretty much swollen shot. Does any of that jog your memory, Mike? No, it doesn't. Mm. Did you have any kind of animosity or anything like that towards? Mm, not at all. No. Have you ever had uh, a violent outburst or anything like that before when you were drinking? No. Anybody ever told you that you got violent when you drank? No. Huh. Yeah, that's... I can't believe it. There's, huh. a lot, there's a lot of people, like I said, uh, commander down in your unit said you guys were practically brothers. Yes. He, he, he were too. Huh. Hmm. It's possible that Michael could very well be in shock, which would explain his behavior. A person suffering from shock will have an altered mental state. Their mind feels like it's in a fog, which slows down their alertness and awareness. They will also be in denial about their situation. Do you have any questions for us, Mike? Uh, it's just, uh, it's just unbelievable. I just, uh... Did you make any phone calls? I mean, did well, you... I called my wife, uh, you know, earlier in the night. It's, uh... Man, it's just, it's unbelievable. I just I it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. <clears throat> why do you, why do you say that? I I I got no problem. I you know, I I I can't I can't believe what you're telling me. Uh, it has happened. <clears throat> I can't believe it. Hmm. Wow. Well, this sucks for us just as much as it does for you. I mean, having to arrest a, a fellow officer, you know, for something like this. Was it, is dead. I, I cannot, I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Huh. And from what? What the, I mean, what's he, what's he dead from? Well, right now, said we don't know until we have the autopsy. Right. I mean, because I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm feeling my hands. I, I mean, I, my hands don't feel anything. Uh, you know, I, you know, I, I, what's he dead from? I, I don't understand. I mean, it, it appears that he's been beaten to death <coughs> by all by all uh, indicators that we have at this time that we, uh, you know, that we can physically see. Uh, it, it gives the appearance that he's beat to death. His head is very swollen, like we said. His uh, right eye is completely shut. <clears throat> and the uh, as he laid there, you know, as, as time was going on, as we were getting the search warrants and everything together that we needed to do, uh, bruises were starting to show up even more. Hmm. 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 I mean, you you can't think of anything that that would have triggered you to to jump on. Nothing. I mean, it's nothing. It's uh, 
Unbelievable. Hmm. Something happened at some point in time that triggered a reaction from you, and that's what we're just trying to to figure out ourselves. Well, I mean, you know, we find out that you guys are down here for a damn homicide and crime scene class. Yeah. Uh, sent down here by. And then this mess happens this morning or last night. Mm -hmm. Mm. It just throws all of us for a loop. It throws all your your bosses and everything, <coughs> your partners and everything else for a loop. Yep. Mm. Got no problem. I, I don't. It's just unbelievable. I can't. I don't know. Mm. At what point in the game do you remember? <clears throat> then we went out to eat. Was the game playing when y'all left to go out to eat? No, no, we came back. It was the Dallas game. I don't even know what time it started. He kept wanting to go out. He kept wanting to go out. And I just kept telling him, I don't want to go out. You know, it's a bad idea. We shouldn't go out. Where was he wanting to go? In the bar. Uh, I don't know nowhere specific, you know. <clears throat> Did he keep on about it and you got upset about that? <clears throat> well, he he kept on about it, but I, you know, I don't remember getting upset about it. You know, he just, yeah, he kept on about it. It's like, it seemed later than it was, you know, it seemed, seemed late. Yeah, it's time change, man. It messes everything up. It gets darker a whole lot quicker than it does. It seems later <clears throat> than it is. Yep. And, uh, you know, he kept wanting to go out. Let's go to the bar. When you go to the bar, I said, that's a bad idea. We shouldn't, you know, let's not do that. I don't, I, I mean, I wasn't pissed off at him, for God's sakes. Shit. Huh? Now, I remember you said that he got the bottle of vodka. Were you guys both drinking vodka or just? Yeah, I, I, drank, I drank vodka with him. You know, because that way it'll be something uh, the Emmy's office will need to know, especially when we do the toxicology. I don't. I. Um. I. I can't. I'm. It's unbelievable. I just cannot believe. I can't. Can't believe it. Hmm. Hmm. Michael would be sentenced to life in prison for taking the life of police chief Lucky Miller. Lucky's sister would speak at Michael's sentencing in regards to the death of her brother. She stated, One of the things I struggle with the most is trying to understand how the person who was his partner and friend and knows all of us was the one who took his life, even when Lucky was pleading with him to stop. I cannot fathom how a person, especially one who was sworn to serve and protect others, could take someone else's life with his bare hands. And that's where we're at, because like I said, there's, there's our department that's wanting to know what happened, and right. there's your department wanting to know what happened. Oh, I, like, yeah, uh, I, get, I get you. And at that time, like I said, we, we didn't know what your condition was, whether we were gonna get answers or not, and then, like I said, there's more questions than answers. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially since you guys had such a uh, a close relationship to begin with. Yep. Anything else? You got any questions for us, Mike? Before we get you across the street? No, I guess I'm getting booked into jail. And uh, yes, sir. Okay. Yep, we're gonna uh, get you booked in the jail and put in uh, special housing over there so that you're not 
back there with the uh, heads and stuff, but and uh, protective custody. You're not uh, you're not wanting to harm yourself or anything, are you? No. Okay. Do you have any kind of medical issues? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, you don't take any kind of well, you take asthma medication, right? Yeah, I've, I've, I've got some uh, <coughs> uh, inhalers. Is that something that you have to have every day? <coughs> no, it's, it's as as needed. <coughs> usually, yeah, I take the one every uh, usually every day, but it's not. I don't know if it's doing any good or not. But one of them I, that I need sometimes. Well, just make sure that you tell them that over there when that nurse is talking with you. Mm -hmm. That you tell them all that so that they can get that stuff for you. Shit, man. I just, mm, I can't. I, I just can't believe it. It's unbelievable. Hmm. Well, that's what we're just trying to figure out. You know, I mean, things happen. Bad things happen. Yep. Sometimes. And there is no excuse for it, no reason why. We just, We don't know. It's a moment in time where you, I guess you don't realize what's going on. Mm. My days. Mm. <coughs> mm. Car's going with him? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank all right. you. I'll let you all check. This is Investigator Martinez with the Scammy County Sheriff's Office uh, interview and it is conducted at the Hilton on Pensacola Beach uh, 12 via De Luna. Uh, present during this interview is Deputy Sheriff Lloyd uh, and John Gardner. Can you state your name for the record, sir? John Garner. Mr. Gardner, are you employed with the Hilton, sir? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. How long have you been employed? Since April of 2018. Okay. Mr. Gardner, um, what are some of your duties here at the Hilton? Uh, I'm in charge of maintenance of the property on nights. Okay. Were you working on the uh, day the, uh, of the homicide here at the Hilton? Yes. Okay. Can you tell me about that night or that evening? Uh, started off all normal. No worries. Uh, the... Uh, Room in question had a service call at approximately 6 o'clock for a TV remote. Uh, went up to the room and saw the two gentlemen. Everything was fine, uh, including the TV remote, which is in the room on the table. Okay. Did you go in the room? To, uh, Not at that time. I was standing in the doorway, and I saw the TV remote, and then all I asked is, are the batteries good? And he said, let me check. So we checked, and everything was fine. Okay. And then I left. All right. Um, was that first time also any time someone, as far as you getting noise complaints about the room, or is it? There was no noise complaints at that time. Okay. So the second time you went up to the room, what was that? The second time was a noise complaint from the guest in... Uh, Room two two or five two five, and we wound up moving those guests to another room. And uh, I told one of the gentlemen that uh, just brought his head to the door with it just open slightly that we have a noise complaint and you need, guys need to calm down. This is your first warning. And he said, "Okay, well." calm them down okay and once what about the next time next time was after the guest in 529 had a noise complaint and uh then they actually after they made a noise complaint they came down and said it all of a sudden went silent we don't hear anything and so i went up to the room and I knocked on the door, uh, 527, uh, announced myself as maintenance, security, and I, all I got was a grunt in return. Uh, I knocked on the door one more time, 
announce myself again. All I got was a grunt in return. Third time, knock, grunt, and then I called on the radio down to the front desk and uh, told them I'm going into the room. All I'm, I'm not getting anybody to come to the door, and all I'm hearing is a grunting noise. They said, okay, you're authorized to go in. I went, opened the door, announced myself. Uh, no one, I could not see anybody other than uh, someone's feet on the floor between the bed and the wall. Um, I walked in further, saw one gentleman sitting on top of the other gentleman and I told him he needed to get up and all he would do was grunt. I observed some blood on the sheets. I need to lock that. Sitting on top of the gentleman, I told him to get up. All he did was grunt, and I said, "Okay." Observed some bed on the sheets, and I asked him one more time, "Get up off the gentleman." I, the gentleman that was laying on the floor, I was kind of noticing him if any uh, movement on his chest was happening. I didn't notice any, so then I got, I called down to the front desk on my radio and said call for the deputies and I asked the gentleman to get up off the other one all he did was grunt again um, this whole time his eyes were just barely open and closing okay when you say his eyes were barely open. Are we talking to the guy on the ground or the one that was on his chest? The one that was on his chest. Okay. I couldn't see the gentleman's face on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, third, or, yeah, my third time asking him to get up. Uh, he did not. He grunted. I got up on the bed, grabbed the gentleman sitting on, sitting Grabbed him by the arm up near the shoulder, pulled him off, to have him fall on the bed, and I noticed the gentleman on the floor, his face was discolored, and then I called on the radio, called for the ambulance, the rescue squad, and then I... The gentleman that was sitting on him, I then realized he's on the floor, face first in the carpet, and I didn't do any more until, other than going to the door and just observing the one on the floor staying still, as far as the gentleman I pulled off, and there was still no movement from the other gentleman that was being sat on. Uh, and, and that I was waited. the one between the, the bed and the wall? Yes. Okay. And then I just waited for the deputies to arrive, and then they took over the room. Okay. So when you said you waited, were you waiting in the, uh, doorway. the threshold of the door? Yes. And the door was open, no one came in, no one left? Other than me, no one went in that room. Okay. So, um, and the gentleman that and was I was keeping the door open mainly to keep an eye on the gentleman that was face first 
that I pulled off. Okay. So when you said you got on the bed, you pulled him up, did he come up onto the bed with you? Or did well, you pull no, I was on the bed. I was standing on, on the mattress. Okay. Yeah. And I grabbed him by, like I said, the upper arm or shoulder area, and I pulled him okay. to get him off. I was intending him to stay on the bed. Okay. I wasn't actually trying to get throw him across the room, but I don't know. Okay. All right. So, and the gentleman you saw stand, uh, sitting on, um, I will say it's the victim um, that was laying on the on the ground between the wall and the bed, is the one that um, was laying face down near the dresser and the foot of the bed. Correct. He's the same guy that EMS attended to once they arrived as far as i know the ems attended both of them okay but he's the one that got removed from the room were you there when he got trans yes uh, transported yes okay the one they transported was the one i pulled off the one that was sitting on the chest the chest of the guy between the bed and the wall okay all right uh and then you also provided us the uh, log of the card reader on the door, correct? I did. Okay. Uh, and that'll show the time that you went into the room? Yes, it will. Okay. All right. Is there anything else that you think that uh, is important that you uh, uh, can remember more about that evening? What's important? I, no, nothing glaring at me okay all right will you raise your right hand for me you swear or affirm what you told me today is the truth to the best of your knowledge yes it is okay this is investigator martinez and this will conclude the interview thank you for watching i will see you next time here on the red tree crime youtube channel